All right, Aviators fans, welcome back to another player interview. I'm your host, Zach Stripler, manager of the tennis tournament in Bermuda, and we are joined by... John Sullivan. John Sullivan. The one, the only. Uh, fans, thanks so much for tuning in to all these. You guys have been incredible. We've been getting your feedback. Much appreciated. Also, uh, before you finish this video, I want you to pause it, and I want you to make sure you're following, you're subscribed, you're liking the page, and go check out our website. We've got some merchandise up. Get yourself some nice kit like my friend John has here, and get in the mood because the aviators are doing some cool stuff. <clears throat> so we've got you, and I want to talk about this gentleman to my right. John, how are you today? Doing great. How are you? <laughs> Very good. As you say, John is an expert, expert conversationalist. I'm very excited for this. So I played with John. I met you... Sophomore year in college. Yeah, sophomore in college. 20 years old, 19 years old. Yeah, this is a, a little bit ago. So I've known John quite a while, and he's, he's made his way through the ranks, and he's been doing phenomenal. I've had the pleasure of playing with him, uh, which has been a great experience for myself. Uh, learn a lot about him. And I, I've known him since, like you said, it's in college. But um, John, if you can give give us a little bit of a background, where you're from, where you went to college at, playing, and then your career up to this point now. Sure. Um, so I grew up in Orchard Park, which is a town outside of Buffalo, New York. Uh, I went to school pretty locally, about an hour, hour fifteen away, St. Bonaventure, right between uh, Bowling and Allegheny. Uh, I went there for five years. It was not a victory lap, I was doing a master's, <laughs> <laughs> which I completed. Uh, I moved to Boston for about a year and a half and played with Mystic, had a great time there. Uh, but then the MLR started, so I just uh, kind of packed up my Civic and drove on down the coast, moving to New Orleans, and I've been there ever since. Nice. Yeah. Um, so when you were in Boston, yes, I happened to meet a few of the guys that were bros with you in Boston. Shout out Pigpen. Yep. Gianni Madaloni, <laughs> what's up bros? Yeah. So uh, yeah, when I moved up there, I'm like, yeah, I know Sully. And they had nothing but great things to say about it. It's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they did. So John, you've made um, made a bit of a transformation um, in terms of playing wise. Because when I knew you, I first met you was sevens only. Yeah. Right. And then when we played in New Orleans, you were a back row and did some second row stuff. What are you doing now, position wise? Because I um, see you you beefed up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for reference, we met when like eight years ago when I was like. 200 pounds, if that, on a good day. That was less, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I'm playing hockey these days. I threw on a bunch of weight. Um, flanker was going great, but it just kind of like, I kept putting on weight, to be honest. <laughs> I like I like the gym, I like eating, and uh, the coaches were kind of like, hey, we think, you know, the front row would be a good spot for you. So I kind of pulled the trigger, and I intentionally put on weight. <laughs> yeah, no, not, you were not 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 yeah. yeah. Guys, if, if you're in exercise and fitness, Follow, what's your Instagram account? Uh, at J-A-S-U-L-L-Y-563. Follow this dude on Instagram. <laughs> he does the most bizarre things with weights. And it's not just like doing a funny stretch, touching your toes while something's over here. Like 300 pounds on the bar with like a single arm or something funky like that. Weird stuff, man. Yeah, yeah it's great. <laughs> Creative dude. <clears throat> so John, leading into this tournament, um, big thing, you know, uh, in 2016, I had the opportunity to play at the Aviators and it was awesome. Something I'll definitely never forget. And now 2020, fast forward, we now have the opportunity to to reinvent the brand and, and continue to develop the brand. Um, what does it mean to a player like you who has gone through, you know, the pathways of American rugby to have the opportunity to wear an aviator shirt? Um, I mean, it's been a grind. It's, uh, I'm sure you can relate. You know, it's tough to get invited to a tour like this. Yeah, you do have to go through the ranks. And uh, now that I'm here, I'm just I'm pumped to, you know, wear the colors. Really fast and represent the team. And spend a month in Bermuda. I mean, it's paradise here. Yeah, right? not a bad deal, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Coming into it, so you've got some pretty good props that are on this team as well that are very decorated and have their fair share of very high level games. You know, what's uh, are you even picking their brains? You know, like the Patties and the Bowmans of the world. Yeah, I've been trying to uh, the best I can. Uh, tens, unfortunately, is not the most set piece oriented game yeah. style. Um, but you know, I've had a few good uh, scrum sessions, and uh, I mean, it's it's always just a matter of trying to learn. I think that's why I've got here. I know it's probably the same with my teammates. You know, you're just trying to pick up what you can yeah. from the players that are better, or more experienced, or beat you even. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enough, yeah. That's how you learn. Truly. All right, John. Um, let me get. Hold on. Real quick question. Weights wise, because you've been doing some weird stuff, like I mentioned earlier. 
what have you been doing to prepare yourself for this tournament? Because like you said, it isn't 15, so it's a different animal for you all together. Well, I started running again. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, honestly, uh, this last season with Nola, my first season of prop, I did put on a lot of weight, and it was, uh, you know, I know it was not the best weight. I ate a lot of pizza and ice cream. Exactly. Well, yeah. Um, Domino's takeaway. He'll, yeah, he'll, 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 a good time. he'll tell you. So I, I actually, with the beginning of this off season, because I knew it was going to be a longer one, I cut down, you know, 15, 20 pounds, and uh, tried to put the weight back on the right way, which has gone pretty well, I think. Um, but it also was a challenge with pandemic, and uh, I moved with my wonderful girlfriend Emily to New Jersey. Shout out Emily, the better part. Shout out the better part. <laughs> yeah, she is the better part. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> but uh, we did a move, and uh, you know, down in New Orleans, a lot of gyms were still open, but uh, up north they were closed. So I went on the uh, journey to start my own home gym, which is uh, working pretty well. Yes, yeah. pushing ten in the garage. There you go. Doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. All right, John. I'm going to budge you through some questions here. Sweet. Uh, lucky for you, you have the Halloween theme. Because you're spooky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother, what's a uh, favorite movie? Uh, I don't know, Starship Troopers. Wow. Yeah. What a throwback. It's just a weird, good movie, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, favorite book? Uh, I'm going to go with the series, and I'm going to say Stormlight Archives right now. It's not completed, but so far it's a very uh, awesome read. John and I are, are very yeah. avid readers. We would always go back and forth on what we're reading. John's more of like the far out sci-fi crazy fantasy. stuff. Yeah, yeah fancy guy. It's more of like some law fiction stuff. Yeah. But we've had good conversations about it over the years. Um, favorite type of music? Oh, I would say probably just like metal. I listen to a bit of everything, but I love metal. Sweet. Um, <laughs> favorite Halloween costume when you were a kid? Oh man, that's a weird one. Um, Oh, uh, you know when Jackass came out and like Party Boy was like all the rage? Yes. I got a tear off suit and I did that around my neighborhood and it created Old was... Old enough. <laughs> <laughs> Old enough to know better? Old enough, Old enough to know better. Alright. John, if there was one song that you would pick that would play behind you when you were walking all day, every day, what would that song be? Oh man. That's a tough one. Five. Four. Uh, no. Three. Two, go. I got nothing. Wow. I know. That's, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, pass. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Guys, throw out some <laughs> ideas in the comments what you think yeah. John would be. Song, John would song. Alright. Alright, Johnny, we're getting into the Would You Rathers. Okay. Ready? I'm going to give you two options. You give me this one or that one. Okay. Can't say pass on any of these. There's still two options. Yeah. Okay. Would you rather be abducted by aliens or possessed by a ghost? To fight aliens, I go with aliens. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst Halloween candy? Necco wafers or candy corn? I like candy corn. Do you? Wafers? Yeah. You, you would be the kind of guy that's candy corn. <laughs> yeah, I know you're like it. Uh huh. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, are you renting a Halloween costume or making your own? Oh, I'll make my own. What's worse, showing up to a Halloween party and then having the same costume as someone else, or having a costume that you have to explain throughout the night? That's a good question. I'm gonna go with uh, having the same costume as someone else because I try to be unique with my costumes. It's easy to do business then. Yes. Yeah. Um, would you rather spend the night in a haunted mansion or a haunted prison? Mansion. Would you rather watch a Stephen King horror movie like The Shining? Or a fantasy movie like Green Mile? Um, I go with the horror. Yeah, yeah. I could do it. I think this stuff freaks me out. It does horror better than fantasy ones. I agree with that. That's fair. I agree with that. Uh, would you rather be covered in snakes or spiders? Probably snakes. Scarier type of horror movie, a paranormal movie or a slasher film? Paranormal. Once again, you can bite the slasher. Yeah, that's fair. If you were in a horror movie, would you rather take on Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Or Pennywise from It. Ooh, I read the book It actually, and I thought the book was super spooky. Yeah, I'm definitely going to base. Yeah, true. I think I stand a chance. Yeah, It, you got no chance. No, I'm your team. Which rugby player would make a better villain in a horror movie? The famous Frenchman, Sebastian Chabal, or Italian prop, Nastro Martin Castro Giovanni? I'm not Chabal. Chabal. He looks like a good villain, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He'd be the villain on my team, though. <laughs> I'm picking. 
All right, guys, that's it with uh, John and Zach. Again, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you are following us. Uh, you know, on all the social medias, go buy yourself some gear. Follow John on Instagram if you're a crazy weightlifter like he is. See what it takes to go from 225 to God knows how much weight he is right now. Yeah. <laughs> but guys, thanks again. I uh, really appreciate it. John, anything you want to say to the fans? No, uh, it's a good game. It's a good blast. <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs>